Good evening, everyone. We continue in Job chapter 30, and we continue from where we left off yesterday in chapter 29. Understand that in chapter 29, Job was describing his earlier life. A few months ago, uh, before he suffered this current predicament, he described a very noble life where everybody looks at him at all in full respect. But now in chapter 30, he now paints the current picture. He says, But now those who are younger than I mock me. Now in the past, in chapter 29, the youngsters would hide from him. Why? Because uh, they are so afraid of Job uh, strutting around being so wise, so knowledgeable, and so righteous. And then he talks about these younger people whose fathers I refuse to put up with the dogs of my flock. These are the young people whose fathers that Job felt was not even suitable to guard his sheep. He says, verse 2, Indeed, what good was the strength in their hands to me? Uh, it says that um, Job did not find them of any use. Vigor had perished from them. In verse 3, describes this group of people from poverty and famine. Uh, they are gone. Now, what is this word in verse 3? The word I, I guess in verse 3, it says uh, it, they are barren. I think barren is a good word. Uh, they, they are solitary. It means that they, they are the rejects of society. And Job has nothing to do with them. Uh, they, they gnaw at the dry ground by night in ways and desolation, and they are out there in the cold, that they are not part of society. Verse 4, who pluck salt wheats by the brushes. Now, the word salt wheat, uh, a kind of a, a marsh in the salt marsh, it could be translated as Moss, that's their food. They, they pick fruit from areas where they are not growing, where people don't even eat, whose food is the root of the broom shrub. The idea of a broom shrub would be like juniper roots, right? like juniper roots. Verse 5, they are driven from the community. They are outcasts. They shout against them as against a thief. Nobody wants them in the community. So they live on the slopes of ravines in holes in the ground. And among the rocks, among the bushes, they cry out under the weeds. They are gathered together. These are pictures to give us the, the kind of people they are. They are the... I guess you could say the community outcasts, the rejects uh, that nobody wants, that nobody wants. Verse 8. Verse 8 tells us that they are worthless fellows. Now, what is worthless fellows? I guess you could call them um, senseless. Senseless, foolish. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a good word. Not really worthless in the sense of no worth, but they are not, not someone that the people in the community would want to engage. So it's even those without a name, uh, or they are people. 
They are people without a name. They are amongst the, how would you say, they are amongst the, the community and they are outcasts. They, they don't have a name as a people. They are cast out from the land. Now this idea, cast out from the land, in verse 8, uh, you could say that they are men who has no, I guess you can say, no nobility, uh, no, no name, outcasts. And they are cast out from the land, the promised land. Now listen to verse 9. 9 means, I have become their taunt. Now this word taunt is, um, is this word here. Right? This word here. Uh, the idea of this word is actually music. Uh, you it is put into a song, and this implies that this is mocking. So it's a mocking song. That Job has become uh, a theme of their singing. When their singing is not about entertainment, their singing is about mocking. So taunt is the translation. I have become a byword to them. Now, what do you mean by by word? The, I guess you could say that it is at the tip of their tongue. Their tongue. A, a word to mock or to mean something useless. Now, notice these are the worthless and most senseless, foolish, useless people in the community, outcasts, and they are now mocking Job. What is Job trying to point out is that in a very imagery sense, even the worst of the community in society has turned to mocking Job. And Job has turned from utter nobility, that people are at all with him. They cover their mouth when they see Job. And now Job is uh, part of a mocking song. So the outcasts of community loathe me, stand aloof from me. They do not refrain from spitting at my face because in verse 11, and then that's important, because God has done something or at least in the mind of Job. Now, understand this is in Job's mind. This is how he sees God. He says that God has undone my bowstring. Undone means to loosen. And so if you have a bow, it is very tight to shoot an arrow. However, if this is loosened, you can't defend and use it anymore. And that's the picture here. God has loosened my bowstring. He has afflicted me. Now, this is an important word. He has afflicted me means he has made me lowly. He has bruised me. He has humbled me. He can't even stand up. He has depressed me. Pressed me down. And these people have cast off the bridle before me. So understand, a bridle is something that you harness the, the animal to, to obey you. They have cast off the bridle. Now they are in total disobedient. They will not listen to Job anymore. Verse 12 says, on the right hand, their mob arises. 
Now, this word mob, uh, I guess it's it's a it's an old word. The youth, the young people. The young people arises, and you know what happened in chapter 20. The young people will stay away from Job, but now they will push aside my feet, pile up the ways of destruction against me. They are determined to go against Job. They break up my path, they promote my destruction. No one restrains them. Now, this idea, no one restrains them may be translated slightly. Uh, I think this word, this phrase here, really can be translated. These are those people whom no one has helped. That would be this idea here uh, that they have nobody's helped them but these are the outcasts that is now against me so what you can see down is Job being a noble has been cast down into lower than the outcast so this is the that Job is painting the picture, right? Job is painting this picture. Verse 14, as through a wide gap they come. This is a breach in a wall. So if you understand the picture here, if we have a wall, and then we have a breach, What's going to happen is that the breach will have water gush in, rushing water. It is basically to tell us that these outcasts are coming in, trying to storm over Job. So Job in verse 15 now describes this. Sudden terrors are upon me. They chase away my nobility, my dignity, my nobility. Like the wind. And my prosperity has passed away like a cloud. What this means is the past wealthy and noble life of Job is gone. This is what Job is describing. People are coming, rolling, steam rolling over him. Suddenly, everything is gone. And then he reads this, and now my soul is poured out within me. Days of misery has seized me. The, the idea is that his current life is misery. Now, this is a good word, is misery. At night, it pierces my bones within me, and gnawing pains do not rest. Now, this idea here is about his affliction. It's not just that his life has changed. His affliction, the boils, his health, it is painful. I, I don't know how to express to you the immense pain that he is in, but Job is using these very imagery type of words to describe his, his, his pain. Verse 18, it's in by great force, the intensity of this oppression has distorted my garment. It ties me up like a collar of my coat. Uh, basically, it is life is strangling him. I think you could say that, strangling him. He is now describing his current life. How painful is it? 
Well, in verse 19, it says that, I think it is not about he, it is about it. These are the oppressions, right? The oppressions, this is not God. The oppressions has thrown me into the clay, into the mud or clay. Because that is what Job is sitting on, on clay. And I have become like dust and ashes. Now, I think this is not about becoming. Uh, the word here is, in verse 19, I am likened, not become, but uh, lichen or if you want to use become is become as that's a picture mud and clay dust and ashes that is Job's life it's of utter uselessness now I want to point out to you from verse 20 it is Job's view in his inner man, his nephesh is crying out. He says, I cry out to you for help. This you is God. In this aspect, I cry for help, but you do not answer me. I stood up and you turned your attention against me. Now, verse 20 this aspect may, might be a bit of a difficulty. Um, I think we could say that uh, you, you, it, it's not about you turn your attention to me. Um, it's, it appears that it is as though God despised him. Uh, it is in the negative. Right? It's in the negative. That God looks at him and instead of understanding him, it is an aspect of despise. Job thinks that he is being despicable to God. That That's the impression that Job has. So Job feels that no, he is being righteous, very noble, uh, following what God has told him. He is God-fearing. He shuns evil. He does what is right. And then when he cries out to help, well, instead of God answering to rescue him, he is, well, he feels, I guess you can say that he feels that he is being despised by God. He feels that you have become cruel to me. He feels that he is being treated cruelly. So this is his view of God, right? View of God. So you need to look at the chronology. He was noble and then he became like Useless mud. And so he, done, he doesn't understand what happened. And so he calls out to God, but he doesn't get an answer. Right? He doesn't get an answer. In verse 21, he says, You turn to be cruel to me, and by your hand you despise me. This is despise. And so he's seeing the opposite of what he expected from God. God did not do anything, did not respond, and he's getting all this pain and agony of boils. Verse 22, he says, You lift me up to the wind. Now this word wind is ruach, is also translated as spirit. And that's why some people say, oh, this is an evil spirit. Well, Think of it this way. It is an imagery that Job is saying. 
You've lift, lifted me up to the wind, the, the spirit. And in this case, this is seen as evil, right? It's seen as evil, being that in the eyes of Job, what he experiences is evil. It is bad. It, it's not helping him at all. And he's saying that, God, you're making me ride the wind. Right? You're making me ride on the wind, riding on the spirit. Now, that is just an imagery. And then you melt me in the storm. And so basically, this is an experience of Job that he is being destroyed. It's just a very imagery-driven way of expression. For I know that you will bring me to death. Now understand death. Uh, death is end of life. This is important for us to understand. So Job says yes. And with this, I know that you are bringing me to the end of my life. I feel that I shouldn't live anymore to the destination of life. So to the house meeting of all living, to the meeting place, to the destination. Because all living will come to an end. And this would mean death. So Job says, I know this clearly. Is this what you're doing to me? Because I haven't died yet. Then it says here, yet one does not does get what does in a heap of ruins not reach out his hand. Now this is a this is a problem with the translation, right? A problem with the translation. This idea of a heap heap of ruins. It actually points us to uh, how would we describe it? It's about destruction. Right? It's about destruction. Some will call this the grave. That you're not reaching out your hand. Right? It means that God has not destroyed him. And so Job is perplexed. You are leading me to death, but I am not yet destroyed because I want to go into the grave, but he, but the grave is not reaching out to me. So that is a very imagery uh, picture. He says, though disaster is there, uh, Now, this word may have a bit of a translation problem. I think we could say that uh, in his disaster, there is some relief. What Job is saying that this disaster is supposed to lead him to death, but it doesn't come up and, and drag me to death. I am still alive. What is happening? That would be verse 24. Now verse 25. In verse 25, he is comparing, why is this happening to him? Have I not wept for the ones whose life is hard? Uh, and, and basically he's saying, you know, those who have a difficult time, those who are heavy burden, right? This is heavy burden. Did I not cry for them? Wasn't my soul grieved for the needy? Remember, this is about righteousness. That's Siddhika. 
what is right by God is to take care of those who is unfortunate or less fortunate, the needy, the poor, the fatherless, and the widow. This, he says, haven't I done any of this? This is to justify. And in verse 26, he says this, I had hoped, expected, hoped for good. And then what happened? Evil came. I waited for the light. Then darkness came. Now this one we have to explain a little bit. There was this hope. And then there is this reality. In the mind of Job, very much the same as, say, Buddhism or some other religions, uh, where they say, when you do good, you will be compensated with good. When you do evil, you'll be compensated with evil, punishment. And so Job says, I expected this because I am doing good. I'm doing right and I expect good things to happen. But now what really happened is I did good and the reality is evil. I am walking in the light and I am seeing darkness. And this is the reality. He is very perplexed. He's very perplexed. This word here, I'm seething within. Uh, now, the idea of seething within, it's about boiling, right? I am boiling within. And the word within here means bowels, uh, means innards. The inside of me, my, 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 my stomach, my, my intestines, they are boiling and cannot rest. That is how he's feeling now. Days of misery confront me. The word rest is silent. I'm boiling inside and I cannot be silent. I am in pain. My days of misery is confronting me. Uh, came to me, basically. I go about mourning without comfort. I stand up in the assembly and cry out for help now. This verse 28 reads a bit different. He says, I go about not mourning. This word is darkened. And without comfort, this is not without comfort, uh, without the sun or without the heat of the sun. The second part here is, I arise in the assembly. This is in a public place. And I cry out. Now, this is not cry out for help in the sense of an enemy. I cry out for help in pain. He is screaming in pain. Now, that would be the better picture of this expression. I come out in public and I'm screaming in pain because I can't stand it anymore. In verse 29, he says, I have become brother to jackals. This is, a, how would you say? Uh, it is describing his company. Uh, the idea of jackals here, would be animals, animals that 
people do not keep company. That is what this means, jackal. From the idea of tanim, uh, like monsters. And a companion to ostriches. Uh, well, this is not, uh, how would you say, a companion to ostriches. Uh, this, a, no, a companion, a daughter to the, well, this is an uncertain word. Uh, this word ostriches literally means an unclean bird. Like an unclean bird. So this could refer to ostrich or owl. Both unclean. This is an unclean animal as well. So what is he saying is that I am now a brother. I'm now a brother uh, to the jackals, to animals that nobody wants to keep company. These are monsters, unclean animals. I'm a daughter of ostriches or owls. Now that's so he is now describing himself as really pitiful. Verse 30 My skin turns black on me, and my bones burn with fever. So this idea of burning uh, this is I guess the word burn here is to, to become hot scorched like scorched be hot and this idea of fever I guess we don't I don't think we can call it fever. I think this should be understood as dryness. My bones are scotched. Uh, I guess we can say my bones are dry from being scotched. I think you could say that being scotched from the heat. So it is about drying. So my bones, uh, we can say this, my bones, let me put here, my bones have dried from the heat. That is what it means. Uh, so it's not about fever, it's about the, the skin turning black, right? The skin turning black, which means that it's going gangrene, dying skin. My bones are drying up. This is a very, I would say, an imagery of how he feels right now. Uh, and as a result, my harp is turned to mourning, my flute to the sound of those who weep. So understand the picture here. The picture here is my music. My music is now in mourning and weeping. So his life of nobility has turned into a life of mourning. And he doesn't understand. You would see that he is very perplexed. I do good, I expect it to be blessed, but instead of being blessed, I have now been turned into lower than the outcast. I become like worthless dirt and mud. I, my company is with people uh, like the unclean animals. 
I, if you look at me, I'm, I, I look like black skin. My bones is hurting. It's dry and it's hurting me from inside out. So instead of playing my harp, being happy, I am mourning. Instead of playing my flute, being joyful, I am weeping. So that is a picture in chapter 30. And with this, we can see that the life of Job, as he has described, contrasts chapter 29, that he had a life of nobility, and now he has a life that he is describing in so many words in a very imagery way that is fit for nothing. Better for him to have died than anything else. But he says, I, I looked at you, God, but nothing is coming. Why is this happening to me? Am I being punished? If I am being punished, then why, am I, why is my life still here? Because he understands when God punishes a life, the life would have been destroyed. You know, like when God was destroying um, the world, uh, when God is destroying Nadav and Avihu, when God was destroying uh, Korah, you notice that in, in Job's mind, even though those may have been later events, he knows that when God destroys something, there is no hanging on. But right now he knows that I'm not dead. I wish that I was dead, but I'm not dead. The hands of death has not caught hold of me. I'm just hanging on. Why? As you can see, these are perplexing questions that Job has. He feels that when he has done good, he expects good. If he had done evil, of course, then this would happen, but he didn't. So what happened? Why is God silent? Why is this happening to me? And why has this happened in such a way where it has taken me from the heights of my life to a lowest point where even the outcast would laugh at me. So, so take chapter 20, uh, 30 in contrast of 29 as Job's description of how far down in humility he has reached. And with this, we come to the end of our session today.